Alright, let's search for a 10-5. See how this looks once it finds somebody. Alright, that looks a little off. I'm trying to fix this as I go. D4 looks good there. Alright. 9F6. This one's gonna be a little bit of time wasted, but let's get the top looking okay. Alright, we're gonna have that knight. G6, play the King's Indian. Right, 632, <clears throat> I think that looks alright. Alright, cool. Notation's kind of there. I'll update that too. Filter. I got a full screen. Left. We'll go top a little more. 250, 300. 350 should be okay. Alright. And I'll go a little bit further down. All right, knight g7, or bishop g7. This needs to be a little bit. All right, d6 makes sense. This is similar to the tour attack. May or may not be. So far, uh, bottom will go shorter. 400, no, longer, 600, no. Three. Yeah. No, that's still kind of large. Bottom, 350. I think it was five. All right, that was good. It's got the notation. Okay, now to focus. Um, I just want to castle here. Play h6 at some point, maybe. Now the bishop's trapped in here, has to go here. I can also play c5. I think that makes sense to open this up. If he pushes, I can respond quickly th with this, but watch out for the knight coming in for the double pin. That's when I want to play h6, but I could also do it first to kick the pin when I want. And I think now I'll play e6. <clears throat> Just to try to get some space because I'm a little bit cramped. Eventually I want to get this in, but I think this makes sense first. And I don't have to open up my king. Like this formation I think is fine. Just take, open it up. <clears throat> Alright, so he wants to have e4 in, but he's only gotten <clears throat> e3 in. Uh, we could go here, but then my knight is kind of limited. I could also go here, push, and get my knight to c5. Bit of a gambit, but then I have this single backwards pawn. I think I want to prevent e5 for now. Play rook e8. <clears throat> <clears throat> rook e8 also blocks this pawn from coming in. I've got triple defense. I'm almost anticipating he comes here now. But maybe he doesn't. Potential sacrifice if I come here. Where does this knight want to go? Maybe he wants to go here, but I've got the bishop. Which maybe is not an issue because I'll play rook b8. Um, he may be considering playing g4. I don't think so. It's really just an outlet. He could probably. I could probably open things up with this. Maybe I'll play knight here first. Will my bishop be trapped? It will. I'll have to give up bishop, but I think it's okay. It kind of baits him into this. I can always come here. I've got double defense if he captures my knight. Um, if he pushes g4, I can push bishop here. I have to go here now. My rook will take back if he takes here. But I am double attacking here. I can put a third attacker. That was my main idea. All right, so now I have to take with the rook. Knight is pinned. If he comes in here, I could potentially swing over here. All right, he's now able to get e4 in at some point, so I think that's a little bit of an issue. Maybe I should have played g5 earlier. I am threatening to hit this. I could distract him for a second. I think that makes sense because now I'm threatening to hit this after g5. He is then hitting this pawn with his bishop, though. I like the attack on this. I think this makes sense. It kind of opens up this whole diagonal, though. But uh, at least when this pawn... It's a little tricky. I think I have to go here first. My rook is not on e8. Well, I'm still defending this square. Maybe queen comes up here just to defend this. And then I have another defender. 
you know, this first to defend my weakness. It's not hitting my rook. If I can take, I'm threatening to take a pawn, which is why I defended first, because otherwise it would be a trade and he'd be more open. Kind of limit this bishop if I can. Take here. Makes sense. I don't see anything. I'm hitting this twice now because of the bishop. So I've won a pawn. It's a central pawn. I want to get this rook active. <clears throat> I think the rook has to slide back. <clears throat> this rook can now come here. I've taken a defender away from this, so he can play e4. But if he plays e4, I can jump in here. <clears throat> Maybe it makes sense to trade off this backwards knight, because it's not doing anything. He's attacking here. He's not doing anything, but I can defend by coming in here. I've got two defenders here for when he does this. X-ray on e6. Um, I don't have a pawn to push here to defend the knight. And if the knight comes in here, where is he going? Here, maybe? But then this knight is trapped. Not trapped, but... <clears throat> Sacrifice takes check. Bish queen blocks. Yeah, okay, that doesn't do anything. Could come here first, hitting the knight. That doesn't make sense. Loses the piece. I have to defend my knight. Why not bring this one into play? I was thinking earlier of trading everything, but maybe that doesn't do anything. He also has... No, he can't. I'm defending him from coming in here. It's a weak square because I played g5, but... I do want to defend against e5 coming. Bishop e5, knight e5. Yeah, I want to move this out of the way, I think. No, I don't. Because he just lines up and gets two attackers on this knight. This knight needs to move. Maybe I reroute up here. I've got two defenders, like I said, on this. I think this makes the most sense. I want to get up here, maybe bring the other knight to defend. Maybe trade off that bishop, because he's removed a defender of here. Uh, the bishop was blocking me from coming in. So again, I still have two defenders. I can come up here, I think, and get my other knight to f6. He can't take the knight. I'm threatening bishop. Now the question is, do I want to continue coming in here? Do I want to do a move like this first to indirectly defend the pawn? I think I do, because then I can push the pawn after after maybe knight f6. Let's play this first. I feel like I've got more time. If the knight bishop comes into e d5, defending or attacking both of these, um, I have other knight f6, knight df6. Still, now I've got three defenders. Indirectly, I have a fourth one on here. I think I'm ahead especially since his pieces are tied to this and double attacking it. The open bishop is better than his bishop. This bishop's a little bit of a nuisance, but I think I can kick it around with an eventual knight f6, d5. Maybe this rook slides over in some cases once that bishop's out of commission. This is a bit of a weak pawn. I don't think an idea like this makes sense yet. Struggling to find moves for him. I think I've got things well defended. I may consider a move like this. Um, a6, rook c6. I've got defense against my... Oh, that's just a free queen. Okay, yeah, he resigned. All right, um, let's look at the game a little bit. First, I want to turn the engine off. All right, engine is automatically off, good. All right, what did I play here? I think this is the tour attack is what I believe normally in E... F no, E4 doesn't come first. Yeah, so what's different about this is sometimes people play D4, Knight F3, E5, E4, Bishop, 
g5. Bishop g5 does come pretty quick. It's like a London opening, but a little bit more pressure on this piece. Also, you can potentially you know, take over the center. I think his issue was playing e5. That's my guess, because it gave me so much activity, and he wasn't keeping an eye on his exposed pawn. Um, so I think my approach was right. What was he, 22, 47? Okay. Oh, I get reached 2200 because of this. Nice. Um, I can probably throw that on the background here of who I'm actually playing. Um, but yeah, he was 2250, it, just about. Castle makes sense. His whole structure makes sense, and I think c5 is the right move. I played it pretty quick, and I was playing around with the settings. But I think other options... The only other thing I could do is, and I've done this in a tournament, this and then c5, but, you know, just kind of force him to make a decision. If he opens up, his e3 move doesn't make much sense. Um... I'm not going to capture, but just keep the pressure here. It's just way too early. To, like, if he plays this and he has e4, it's a, like a Petrosian, I think, which is fine for white. But here, he's a little. he's got to spend time playing e4. So I think that was the key square, and I think I did a good job of hitting it. Um, e6, I'm pretty sure that's the right way to approach this, open things up. Pretty much always take. Um, if he takes with the knight... I can play g5, um, and then I'm, I'm just opening my bishop up, which is what I want. So he takes with the pawn. Now you can see, like, the pawn's a little exposed, because e4 is what he wants to do, um, or where his pawn should be, if it were a different opening. And now that he's transposed into this uh, structure of this pawn kind of stuck up here, I have plans to hit it, which is what I did in the game. Uh, maybe like knight here, knight here. And in some cases I can play this. That's a little weird though, I think, for this. Because that creates a hole here where um, the control does this. He can kind of like expose it in that way. So I think this move makes sense. And that's why he played h3. And I think rook e8 is good because it just continues to put pressure on here. So that if he ever does capture, I still have two defenders. Because everything kind of wants to line up here. But that's also why the bishop's good. It kind of blocks this. And then maybe in some cases I can go here. And he can't play rook b1 so easily. This kind of goads him into playing g4, exposing his king, and kind of ignoring the center, which is where I'm focused. Um, you do have to be careful that you can actually come here. Because in some cases the bishop is trapped after this. So maybe you want to have h5 if the conditions are different. But here seems fine. You're giving away the bishop for, you know, offering the bishop exchange, or giving him the bishop pair. But it's not an open board with the center. It is for me, more so than him. He's got this pawn, which limits his bishop's movement. This bishop's pretty limited, as long as I can keep him from taking this pawn. And he doesn't have, like, maybe he reroutes to c4. Maybe that's the right play. What did he play? Bishop here? Yeah, I think maybe knight here. Because if I come back, like, this is my weakness. He plays bishop c4, bishop g3, um, tries to hit this. It's a little annoying for me. I could maybe... He has to worry about, you know, dropping this pawn. But maybe that's the right move. We'll see what the engine says. You know, he's still hitting my rook in some ways. And actually, if he comes back here, if I do decide to go this way, then I can't come to c4. No, he can, because the bishop's defending. Never mind. I like just putting pressure because I'm hitting two pawns right now. And the bishop also blocks the queen defending it. So with the knight, but at least with the knight move, he can play an f4. And then he's able to you know, bring his bishop back, bring his knight up, or pawn up to e4 where it wants to go. Try to start to push on my king side. I think g4 makes sense just because it wins a pawn. But there's no rush to get the pawn. He can't defend it. I'm over defending this. If he does something like this, um, which maybe could have been his better move, um, I can probably just take here, hit the bishop, and hit this twice now. So he kind of has to defend the pawn. I get a free pawn, and from there I think it was just good. The right move, this is where I thought for a little bit. Um, does it show the time I had? No. Um, I think I played... I played this knight up because I wanted to get another here. Is that what I played? 
No, I played the other night. So what was wrong with this night? I think just ideas of this after rook e8, uh, d8. Puts a lot of pressure on these two squares. So, like, if I played here, he could play here. Let's say I defend. Well, I'm, I'm, he's hitting me twice, so I can't play that. Uh, delete that. Um, I'm just thinking that this is coming at some point. But maybe it's hard to do. Maybe not. Okay, so just jumping in, rerouting this, and then eventually getting this one. It's a little better than having this knight here and here. I don't think it's as easy. Like, I remove the target. I'm already defending this three times with my knight, rook, and queen. So just hitting this so he doesn't, you know, he would drop a pawn if he does something else. Just captures, pawn takes, check. And I'm up two pawns. And then I get this other rook over. Um, so from here, he just, you know, he dropped the queen. But I think this makes sense, because if he did something else besides dropping the queen, what can he do? <clears throat> I mean, if he reroutes here, I'm planning to play this and then play d5. Um, his knight, maybe not so soon, because his knight can jump into e4, e5. But that's the plan. Play e5, play, open this up and really just kind of get this pawn rolling with the pass pawn. This rook can slide over and hit the queen. I think those are some of the main ideas. Um, but let's see what the engine thinks. Uh, three blunders. Ooh, what? Interesting. All right, how did I play according to openings? Yeah, it likes um, the Grunfeld. I don't play that one. I don't know it very well. D6. Okay, might be D7. I did mention that's an idea. Looks like a lot of players play that, but these are the Lee Chess players. No, this is the Masters, Master Database. We'll play Knight BG7. It kind of keeps it whether you want to play E5 or C5 open, I think. C5 makes sense. Bishop E2, yeah. D5 is number two on the moves. Smyslov variation. Okay. I don't know this variation. Not by name, anyway. Uh, A6, some games. E6 is second move, G5 first. It's more popular. Maybe D2. Yeah, the bishop is not where it wants to be. I think maybe it wants to come here. Is that a main move? No. Bishop, knight D2. I'm not 100% sure why it's incorrect. G5. Oh, wait. I didn't play G5 right now? No, I didn't. Why is... So my main idea is a blunder. This feels off. I played bishop f. I just looked at it. Okay, so like I need to play g5. I just didn't even think of this, even when looking at the game. g5 is helpful because it gives my bishop more control. Like my, my bishop doesn't have a place to go. It wants to be on this diagonal, but not with g6 here. So that's probably the main reason. If I play g5 and then trade off the bishop is kind of what it wants. Why not bring my bishop in here? Beyond me, I'm not sure. g5 first, just trade it off and open up things. Like this opens my bishop. Maybe my queen comes here or here. Maybe. Just seems like my bishop's not on the dead angle it wants to be on. I guess he could challenge it. Okay, I'm not sure. Bishop f5. <clears throat> it didn't like rook e8, so this plan is all wrong. I have to play g5 if I'm going to play h6, and maybe hit his pawn. Do this before he plays here. Yeah. Rook e8 does not like two blunders already. Sometimes developing is not best, but I'm not sure why. G4. I can still play G5. I didn't consider that at all. If I play here, he takes, I take. This king's kind of open, so is mine. Slide over rook, something like that. 
And if his knight goes back... Oh, I have to do g5 because of all of this. Like, I'm, I'm losing this pawn, I think. He doesn't have to take with bishop. If he does, yeah, it's at least a trade. This makes sense. Like, he's tough to defend that. <clears throat> what? Yeah, hitting this indirectly. Oof. Okay. So him taking even things up. Queen makes sense. Now it doesn't like g5. Oof. Play this. Okay. And if he takes... Hitting this bishop. Okay, tactics. Lots of tactics here. I feel like this pawn is not going anywhere. There's some scenarios where, like... That's a good tactic. Did not think of that at all. Okay. So yeah, I can take the pawn. Maybe the queen doesn't want to be there. Okay. <clears throat> Everything else it kind of liked. It didn't like the idea of the knight here. It wanted the queen here. And if he slides, oh, I'm hitting the knight. So he has to defend, and then you get d5 in. And if he slides back. Maybe I'm playing rook e8 after this. Yeah, rook e8 or c8. Just so I can start to push this pawn, I think is the main goal. If he takes, like I'm hitting the queen. Okay, so like the queen, I mean, it makes sense. This pawn's defended once. He has to defend the knight first. That's why it's like you get time to save this pawn. And it's more activity. So I like the way that the suggestion helped to... Um, get these pawns going together because this is a backwards pawn and a target. It's not backwards that it can't move because I'm up a pawn, but yeah. What else could he have played? He could have played here. And if he did that, I think the knight makes sense. It's a little different taking with the queen now. Like this is more of a, it, this is fine for, for white. Whereas here it's just saying take probably wants to line up here. Yeah. This is a weakness on his king side because he played g4. Okay, so some wrong ideas. I think the idea that the e4 square was what I wanted to control is right, but the way I went about it is wrong. Like, still controlling that. Let's just see some main moves. Just developing. He's controlling it. I'm controlling this square. Yeah, I mean, I thought I wanted to control him from moving here, but he gets too many pieces that can do it. Can force it up. Hmm, interesting. Okay, learn some stuff. Alright, I'll do another one tomorrow.